Hey guys, welcome back. So I realized when I made the last video that I kind of jumped ahead because there's um, actually this tessellation is really cool. Um, all I do is um, send in three vertices, a tessellation factor variables array thing, and then it makes this and it's all mathematically defined. So I wanted to share that with you a little bit that this is one of the simplest examples too in OpenGL Super Bible. I just purchased and highly recommend for everyone. So this is the vertex shader. Okay, you notice it's got the vertices hardwired in. So we're not actually sending vertices into the uh, GPU. They're already there. <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay, so the tessellation works with a tessellation control shader, which the main uh, thing that the tessellation control shader does is output tessellation factor levels for the tessellation inner and outer levels and, and the book talks about all that and the specification online talks about that um, and I don't pretend to understand or know all of that just yet either so we're getting there and then it goes into the fixed uh, pipeline fixed state pipeline tessellation engine whatever and then from there it goes to the tessellation evaluation shader which actually controls the positioning of the um, vertices and the output and what gets output <coughs> from the tessellation engine. And then your fragment shader in this case is boring, it just has a hardwired color and we can change that at will. Um, but anyways, this is really cool. And you can see the, the tessellation factor here can be changed, um, which is why I did that, that one video on the animation. So I'm going to save that, compile it really quick, and run it. And you can see we've got much more more dots, more dots. Oh, I've got more dots. Okay, so that's really cool. And then um, I also wanted to do a quick video to show you this geometry shader that goes along with the tessellation stuff. Stuff. Okay, so what the geometry shader did to this one, you see the dots, is so it's got the same tessellation. Okay and I can add the fact, change the factor up and then it goes through, everything's pretty much the same except for the geometry shader now which naturally follows the tessellation engine so so you're going from tessellation and all the factors and adding the extra geometry <coughs> mathematically to your geometry shader which is much more diverse in that you can convert vertices and <clears throat> See, like right here, it says layout triangles in. So that's what you're receiving in is triangles. And what you're outputting is points. So each triangle, which is three vertices, is going to be converted to points. Max vertices, three, and then out. And then that gets done right here. <coughs> so how this works is don't and don't quote me on this but as far as I understand it, you see how it's looping through the GL in dot length okay so when the, so when it gets one input that's a triangle so at one instance of this shader the GL in dot length is going to be three so this is going to be zero one and two so the position is equal to GL in index first time through the loop it's going to be zero and it's going to grab that position of the first vertices of the triangle that gets input from the tessellation. Okay, so as you saw before, all those triangles, they're now dots. See what you've got here? It's really interesting. This is just fascinating to me. And like I said, stay tuned for some of this stuff because I'm really just getting into it. And then the fragment shader is the same. And then one of the things that fascinates me as well is the whole idea of transform feedback and shaders being able to write into um, their own storage blocks as well as images and thing, textures and things like that for storage. And then you get into if they're sharing the same memory, writing to the same memory location, possibly atomic operations, which ensures that the data is not manipulated in parallel with more than one invocation of the shader, but that's for an advanced topic that we're going to get into later. But for now, I just wanted to share with you the tessellation engine, the uh, tessellation control shader, the tessellation engine, 
and then the tessellation evaluation shader and then of course show you also the geometry shader so I'm still trying to wrap my brain around these things and as soon as I figure out <coughs> more stuff to do with them I'm going to make use of them and I would like to uh, experiment with putting all of the calculations including the decision making onto the GPU which uh, I'm very excited about so anyways thanks for watching be sure to like and subscribe leave comments love the comments thank you so much to everybody who comments and asks questions that's so awesome so please do more and more and more of that so uh, thanks again see you next time